Hey there friend, it's Howdy Duty time. Tim Warner here and I'm going to teach you how to use custom instructions in GitHub Copilot. I'm telling you, it was a great day when GitHub finally added the ability to add custom instructions that guides how the AI behaves and where we can put in all of our dev principles, our coding best practices, our security stuff, all of our dependency stuff without having to repeat over and over and over ad nauseum. Now, if you're using command line interface or CLI coding assistance like Claude Code or OpenAI Codex CLI or even GitHub Copilot CLI, you're familiar with the metadata files that those agents create. Like I use Claude Code, for instance, and I ran a slash init in Claude Code and it created a really nice metadata manifest of what this particular project is all about. So you'll notice in GitHub Copilot chat, I'm assuming that you've got a license for GitHub Copilot. We're obviously in Visual Studio Code. We've installed the GitHub Copilot chat extension. We've authenticated with our GitHub token. We're all ready to rock. Notice that it says right on the home page, generate agent instructions to onboard AI onto your code base. Now you don't already have to have agent instructions from another, whether it's cursor or a Claude or whatever it is, you can just have it go on its own intelligence. Let me show you how that works. I'm going to click the gear. Instead of using this text in the chat pane, which might be gone next week, let's open up this configure chat gear and we can come down to generate agent instructions. And I want you to read with me what it's doing here. If I scroll up, first notice that GitHub Copilot is attempting to source existing documents. It's looking for a Claude.md. It's looking for Windsor surf rules. It's looking for Klein. So basically all of the competition, GitHub Copilot is going to do the dry principle, the don't repeat yourself principle in software development, and then it'll ride herd on top of that. What it will do, let me click keep all over here. And it didn't take long to do because I've already short path that it'll take a lot longer for it to create Copilot instructions if you don't already have something there. But Either way, you'll wind up at the end of this process with a new file in your .github folder called copilot-instructions.md. Here's the sitch. Now, you also just as well can create this file manually, but it does have to be called copilot-instructions. It uses markdown format, and it allows you then to enumerate all of your coding requirements and preferences. Now this file, assuming you don't get ignore it, will ride herd with the repo. So this is a repo level instructions file and it's going to be where you want to put all of the conventions and requirements and limitations and preferences that you and all of your repo contributors will use. You got that? Important distinction. Now it used to be that in settings JSON we could create our own user specific instructions but the way that GitHub Copilot in VS Code seems to be in evolving now, or evolving I should say, is the use of dot instructions instead. So now let's go back to the gear and this time let's select instructions from the list says here, do we want to create a new instruction file? Do we want to generate repo level agent instructions, which we've already done? Or do we want to repurpose one set of instructions that might have come along with an extension we installed? Well, I'm going to create a new instruction file here and notice that we can put this either in the repo, which might be of limited use if it's very personalized instructions, or you can put it in your user profile data. And the reason why the user data is important, you can see in the highlight is that it's put under app data roaming code user prompts on Windows and your settings sync will pick this up as long as you're including prompt data and instructions data in your settings sync. That means wherever you are in VS Code, you can have these custom specific instructions as well. I'm going to put this in the repo though to show you where it gets put by default. I'm going to call this PowerShell Conventions. Press enter and let me zoom in to show you what we've got here. First, we've got a YAML preamble here with an apply to field. This is asking for a glob pattern. So if I do double star, whoops, forward slash star dot PS1, this is going to apply recursively to any PS1 file in the entire repo. Now you can specify this by folder, by file name. The apply to line here can be as broad or as specific as you need it to be. The idea is we've got our repo level instructions and then very specific granular instructions that will only be applied when this glob pattern matches to true. And 
in the case of PowerShell, I might be doing module development. So I want to pick up an array of file types. I can do something like this, double star forward slash star dot PS1, PSM1, PSD1, and so on and so forth. So that's the YAML prefix. Let me save my changes before I go any further. The second part is going to be the actual custom instructions. So the idea is if I'm ever operating on a PS1 file, use these instructions. Now I want to point you to a useful GitHub repo. It's in the GitHub org and it's called Awesome Copilot. This is a community contributed repo of prompts and instructions. Let me go down to instructions and let me do a control F and look for PowerShell. And sure enough, there is a PowerShell instructions file already here that we'll look at in raw view. And I'm just going to grab the markdown here. This is potentially going to save you a lot of manual work parsing through your dev docs. I mean, maybe you could use this as a base. You could use generative AI to combine this Microsoft provided option with your own dev docs, if that makes sense. Gen AI is super good at data synthesis. So let me paste that in. So on one hand, you might be thinking, Tim, this is a bit overkill. Aren't I polluting the context and burning up a lot of tokens? That is a legit concern. So I would say that although this is a super robust PowerShell development guidelines instruction, we also want to think about, you know, are we using a sledgehammer when a very small mallet is required? Want to throw that in just in terms of best practices. So let me save that one more time. Start a new chat and I'm going to say, or actually, I'll create a file and I'm going to call this create Azure RS vault.ps1. I'm going to make sure that it's in context down here and I'm going to say create me an advanced PowerShell function that creates a fully optimized multi region RS vault. Put sample data in the variables. I'll fix those later just to get it started. I want to do agent and let me override and use GPT-4.1 here. Now let's take a look at the references that GitHub Copilot is using. Notice that it's picking up our PowerShell convention instructions here and that's worth saying that these dot instructions files have the format of your friendly name that you give it dot instructions dot MD. All right and notice that we've got the global Copilot instructions and the specific instructions but my understanding is that in this case, in the case of any conflicts, your specific instructions are going to override any global instructions that are there. Let me keep those changes. And we've got ourselves an advanced PowerShell function. And what I've got now is assurance that I'm using legal verbs. I'm using all of the community best practices, as you can see here, approved naming, parameters up at the top, geo redundancy, diagnostic settings. I had actually forgotten about that. And then we have have good uh, quality of life best practices like error handling, verbose log streams, and returning a PS custom object for maximum flexibility. Nice. Well, that's exactly what we're talking about here with these instruction files. Now, again, this one was committed in the repo, but you can also put them into your user profile data in terms of their life cycle. Let's finish the demo now. We'll come back to instructions and notice if you hover over, you can copy it to another scope or move it to another scope. You can rename it. You can trash it if you don't need it anymore. Or if you actually click it, it'll open the source file directly. All right. That's the basic lay of the land with custom instructions in GitHub Copilot. Hope you found this tutorial useful. Let me know in the comments any other subjects you want with GitHub Copilot and beyond. And I'll I will see you later. Take care.